I believe every person has a right to basic knowledge of how to optimize their mind, body, and spirit. Here, I bring to you influential individuals and ideas to help you live a more healthy, fulfilling life. I'm Julie Fouché, and I'd like to welcome you to Pursuing Health. Welcome back to Pursuing Health. This is episode number 21, and here I sit down with Pat Sherwood. Pat has been deeply involved in CrossFit for over 10 years. He served in the U.S. Navy as a SEAL from 97 to 2004, and it was shortly after this, around August of 2005, that he started doing CrossFit. He served as a flow master on the CrossFit seminar staff from 2008 to 2011, where he traveled the world teaching CrossFit methodology and functional movements at over 180 seminars, doing this during a period when the seminars were evolving rapidly into what they are today. He eventually made the switch to working primarily with CrossFit Media, where you might recognize him as a staple host and analyst on the CrossFit Games Update show over the past five years. He's also a Level 4 certified CrossFit coach, owner of CrossFit Lynchpin, which provides customized monthly programming for CrossFit affiliates, and he even competed in the CrossFit Games as an individual in 2009. He's also well known for various projects, including Go South, where he traveled through South America on his motorcycle visiting CrossFit affiliates, and the Zone Chronicles. There are a few people who have experienced and understand the CrossFit community as well as Pat, and I was ecstatic to sit down with him and pick his brain for just a few minutes on this episode. But before we get started, a few quick reminders. Number one, if you're enjoying the podcast, make sure you head over to iTunes to subscribe and give it a rating. Also, you can head to my website, juliefouché.com, and enter your email so you can stay in the loop with the podcast and everything else I'm up to with my newsletter, which goes out every two weeks. I'm also always looking for inspiring stories to share, so if you or someone you know has used lifestyle to overcome serious health challenges, please send your story to me at info at juliefouché.com, and I'll select some to share on future episodes. If you're interested in training with me, check out my program through Beyond the Whiteboard. This is the actual training I do now, five days per week, one hour per day, and it's scheduled out for you minute by minute from warm-up to cool down. Right now, we're getting ready for the CrossFit Games Open in just a few weeks. If you would like to try out the program yourself, visit beyondthewhiteboard.com slash Julie Fouché. So with that, let's get started here on Pursuing Health with episode number 21 on all things CrossFit with the one and only Pat Sherwood. here with Pat Sherwood and he has been around CrossFit for a long time a lot of interesting perspectives of CrossFit in the community so I want to start I love hearing how people got started with CrossFit okay so I want to go back to the very beginning and hear how you first found CrossFit and what that was like it was back in the good old uh deep end of the pool days you know you just throw people in but it was August of 2005 and I got a call from a buddy. I was on the East Coast. I got a call from a buddy of mine on the West Coast, mm-hmm. Dave Castro. Okay. Who were both in the Navy together. He had, since he lived around here, he had popped into like the original Santa Cruz because he was a climber and he heard it was a good thing to do if okay. you were into climbing. So he got his butt kicked, called me, and was like, hey, man, go to CrossFit.com. Check this out. And I went to the website. And I'm like, okay. He's like, you got to do this. You got to give it a try. Mm -hmm. And the day that I clicked on it, it was, it might have been about a month before that. It was just like seven by one deadlift. Okay. Which back in the days of like, you know, Monday and Thursdays, chest and try. Then you do abs, like you're in the gym for two hours. I was like, I don't think I'm on the right website. It says (laughs) one, 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 one deadlift. He's like, yeah, that's it. (laughs) I'm like, well, what else am I supposed to do? He's like, that's the whole workout. And I said, this is the stupidest thing I have ever seen in my life. I'm going to fall out of shape immediately. I'm not doing it. And I didn't do it. I blew it off. Okay. And then I think a couple months later, so then I came back to it and just decided randomly, hey, starting on 
in August of 05, mm-hmm. I'm going to just do it for a month and see what happens. So okay. I clicked on it that one day and it was Murph was my first oh, workout, that's a little different. <laughs> which actually didn't sound that bad to me Okay. because You're coming used from to the military, we did thing. a lot of pull-ups. We did a lot mm-hmm. of push-ups. I could run my butt off. Mm-hmm. The only thing I didn't know about were these air squats. Okay. So I saw it and I was like, I had a pull-up bar in my garage and I was like, I, I don't know what. I'm like, I, this thing should take me maybe 30 minutes tops. Mm-hmm. Had, you know, had no idea. Right did it sure my squats were terrible uh it took me about an hour and it just demolished me and i was laying on my back there in my garage and in my simple brain i thought to myself because i thought i was really fit Mm -hmm. especially from having been uh, a seal i'm like i'm (laughs) tip of the spear (laughs) right that i said to myself if there's something out there that people are doing that makes me feel like this i have to become good at this because i don't want to know other people are good at this and i'm not right and from that moment on you're hooked. Uh, I never did anything else. It was just, I had to, yeah. I had to quote unquote master it. And as mm-hmm. of course we all know, you never will. So right. still in the process. That was it. Yeah. And were you still in the military at that time or no? No. And I think that's why I was kind of receptive to giving it a try Okay. is because another fear that I had when I looked at the website, mm-hmm. I didn't see a lot of running. Mm-hmm. And from the community that I came, we ran every, every day. day. Mm -hmm. And I thought you needed to run every day to stay good at running. Mm -hmm. And so I would see that only run a 5K came up every six weeks, Mm -hmm. two months. And, you know, there's a 400 sprinkled in. I'm like, I'm going to fall out of running shape. So I I was very nervous. Right. But then once I was a civilian, I didn't have to worry about taking like military physical fitness tests. I was like, okay, I'll give this a try. And if it doesn't work, at least I'm not being measured. Mm -hmm. And then I'll go back to what I was doing. But of course, it worked just fine. (laughs) That's funny. So I wonder what would have happened if you had clicked the first day and it was something other than deadlifts, if you would have started it a little sooner. Yeah. I mean, it was, but it's so funny. Like it was just that, I don't know what it is about human beings Mm -hmm. is sometimes things that are just, we all think we know everything about everything, you know? And I thought when I was back then, I thought I knew everything in the whole world. And I could immediately identify this entire methodology as stupid by looking at a website <laughs> in 10 seconds, right. right? And I didn't even deadlift back then. Oh. You know, I just did leg extension. Leg, like, I didn't, right. I didn't do squats. I didn't do deadlifts. I just thought that was ridiculous meathead stuff. Mm-hmm. And so I was just, uh, I look back on my ignorant mindset and I was just like, yeah, <laughs> thank God you came back and, and gave it a second chance, you know, because right. here I am. It's even my occupation these days. So right. it's, kind of, it's kind of ironic. So you did the main site for a while. And at what point did you start getting more involved with CrossFit as far as seminars and? Um, That was, so I started back then in in 05 and somewhere around there, maybe in later 05 Mm -hmm. or 06, I went out, flew out to California and get my level one seminar. Okay. With like now looking back at it, just like an OG crew. <laughs> it had, you know, Greg Glassman was there, Nicole Carroll, um, you know, Annie Sakamoto, Eva T, Greg Umminson. You know, oh, it was wow. just like, these are the people that I've been seeing on the website. Right. And I was just like. Right. Oh I God. always think my crew was great. You were one of my, one of my um, level one instructors along with oh, that's a riot. Boz and Chuck Carr as well. And I, I always thought my relative. crew was, yeah. I remember <laughs> looking like, cool. these are the people who see on the website. This <laughs> is amazing. So I, I went out there and got my level one. Yeah. And Dave was still out here in the West Coast. Mm-hmm. And he was getting more and more involved just from hanging around the gym, getting to know everybody. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, the seminar program when it was very small back then. Mm-hmm. And every now and then, they would do one out on the East Coast, usually okay. down in Jacksonville, Florida. We did a lot in Charlotte, North Carolina. Okay. And I was in Virginia Beach, Virginia. So Charlotte was a very short drive. Mm-hmm. And just little by little, when there happened to be one on the East Coast, I would mm-hmm. drive down and just help, mm-hmm. you know. And these were back in the days when we'd have like 15 trainers at a level one seminar. Wow. It was like a gang. <laughs> and I just showed up kind of like at a new kid at a construction site, mm-hmm. really, I just keep my mouth shut and my eyes and ears open and listen to all the lectures and take yeah. notes and watch the lead trainers train and try to learn from that and get coach and Nicole coffee mm-hmm. or whatever they needed from Starbucks mm-hmm. and take out the trash. Like those <laughs> were my primary responsibilities. Yeah. 
And little by little, I guess they were like, all right, you don't seem to be a total idiot. Like, <laughs> can you maybe do this? And then yeah. I didn't mess that up. And Can you maybe do this? And so little by little, it just kind of spiraled until it became just my full-time wow. gig. Yeah. And you were on the seminar staff for a while as a flow master. Yes, um, what are some of the biggest things that you think you learned from that role? Wow. Um, that's a good question. I'm actually shocked no one's ever asked that <laughs> before. It's arguably the best job in the world. It's, it's really tough. It's deceptively tough. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's what I learned about it. Because I would watch people in that role. And I've learned that anyone, if you watch somebody do something, I don't care if it's putting up drywall mm -hmm. or potentially surgery right. or giving a, or public speaking. If they do it and it looks super easy, it's not that it's super easy. It's they're that good and they're that talented and they worked oh, yeah. that hard to make it look effortless. And so I didn't realize initially how much there was to know and how much you had to be good at mm -hmm. to stand up there and do that job. So that job to me was a constant learning experience, constantly. You obviously had to know all the lectures, mm -hmm. which covers everything from human anatomy to nutrition to physics to mathematics to programming to our methodology to everything in between. Mm -hmm. But you can't just memorize the lectures because if you've got 50 or 60 people sitting in the audience, you've got everyone in the audience from regular Joes to, you know, we, li we literally had brain surgeons right. and physicists and everyone in between. And you never, and you never know whose hand's going to go up and dig four layers deeper mm -hmm. or push back hard. And then you're the only one up there in the red shirt with this person with 28 fancy degrees right. that now has put you on the spot. And if you haven't prepared and over done overkill with your preparation, you're going to look like an idiot mm -hmm. in front of everyone and lose control of the seminar. And so to be able to really answer any question that anyone could pop up on any level about anything, I just didn't realize that even when I wasn't working, you know, oh, it's all, oh, like you just work the weekend. Oh, right. That just two days nice. a week. You travel on yeah. Friday and you work the weekends. It's like, yeah, and you'll be wonderfully mediocre. Right. So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday became three to five hours a day of just reading right. every book on every subject on every everything so that when you get up there to give a 30 minute lecture you just knew your stuff mm -hmm. and I just uh it was I learned more during that about what we do human interaction mm -hmm. you know because you've got you're dealing with all people, all walks of life every weekend. Mm -hmm. You're answering questions from them. You're helping them get through movements that they find challenging. You might put them through a workout and everyone else is looking at them and some of them enjoy that. Some crumble down and you have to pick them up and support them. And so it's almost like you have to have a, a minor's degree in like psychology right. as to how to deal right. with these people. So it was a really interesting dynamic job. And the other part was there's the the people that I was surrounded by, mm -hmm. the level one staff, mm -hmm. man, would they just personify everything that I just said. They're doing that same research. Right. They're doing all that. So they're so sharp. They're so on top of their game. It's that wonder crew that you just, you never have to ask them to do anything twice. Mm -hmm. You never have to wonder like it's just done how it should. So it kind of makes, makes it hard, oh, yeah. you know, to work with other folks because they're just, the level one staff is really... They're great people. Definitely. It makes that, that saying like you, you become the, the sum of the five people you surround yourself with. And they're a good five. Like they're that. a good yeah. average five. Definitely. Definitely. I always come away f every weekend that I work feeling like just more inspired in general about everything in my life. Not just, I mean about CrossFit, but about everything. I just want to do everything better. <laughs> every weekend you get to meet 50 new people that even if you're you know, maybe you've heard the what is fitness lecture 35 mm -hmm. times. It's that first aha moment for some 60 year old woman sitting in the front row and you get to relive that again and how cool it was when right. it clicked. It's like, oh, this is what I actually need to do to be fit and healthy. And so it actually, it does kind of, it keeps you on the right track. Absolutely. Definitely. And I can um, agree with you on 
how difficult it is sometimes or how it look people make things look easy until you do it yourself and now I'm on my surgery rotation and I was just talking to the residents about this the other day they say oh it looks so easy when the staff is up there doing the surgery and then as soon as you get the tools in your hands you feel like you don't even have any coordination anymore it's uh that's something I've learned over and over Mm -hmm. again in my life I'm sure I'm not done learning it definitely so from that role, you sort of made the transition once the game started becoming bigger and bigger, more into the media side of things. Yes, ma'am. So what prompted that transition and how, I guess, how has your role in CrossFit changed? That, if I'm being brutally honest, that transition was prompted because I was just burnt out. Okay. Totally burnt out. At that point, I'd been on the road maybe a solid four years, mm-hmm. you know, basically working every, every weekend, weekend except for Christmas and New Year's. So you're 50 weekends a year. You're in a different country mm-hmm. or city every weekend. <laughs> so, you know, 200 trips in four right. years. And I, th- there are guys well beyond that now, like Chuck Carswell, Adrian Bosman, Todd Widman. I mean, they're over 300 seminars, if not approaching 400. Mm-hmm. And they're still on the road. That's I think what did it for me was um, – my couple previous occupations, even before CrossFit, mm-hmm. uh, from military and contract work and stuff, I was I was been traveling since I was 21, mm-hmm. like nonstop. So right. I think after then the four years of that, I was just like, I can't get on another plane. <laughs> Need to be in one place for so a while. So I called Dave and Nicole and kind of told them that I was mm-hmm. like, Hey, you know, this is what I do. Uh, I want to stay with CrossFit. I love it, but I just right. I'm I see that point coming. I'm not there yet. Mm-hmm. And if I hit that, it's not fair to me or the participants like right. they're not going to get the best me and right that's not good and so it just happened to be right when the games was starting and believe it or not what was one of the things was i used to do those silly zone chronicle oh yeah things mm-hmm. on my iphone yeah. which back then like <laughs> back then where crossfit media was that was like a lot of media right. experience like, right. well, you got a lot of experience you shot like 15 <laughs> random shaky videos in your <laughs> iphone so heck let's let's put you on the desk <laughs> and so from knowing CrossFit, from I think public speaking, and then from the Zone Chronicles, and then being burnt out on flying, it mm-hmm. just all those things kind of happened together. at the right perfect time, and I just got my foot in the door. Really, just lucky timing and luck. Mm-hmm. And now it's crazy to see how it's evolved and that how large the media role has become in the games, but also just across the whole the whole year and the whole season. The season is growing exponentially. Mm-hmm. It used to just be. You know, you'd have the Open, do the regionals, and then the games, and it was over. And then it just seemed, even though it's not true, it seems like the Open starts earlier every year. But it doesn't. We just need the preparation or the pre-interviews or, you know, the promotional material that we put out necessitates for us Mm -hmm. the season starting earlier. And then it goes nonstop, you know, even when there's a break maybe between regionals and games. All that is is prep, 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 prep for Mm -hmm. the games. And then once the games finish... You've got team series, I think, in very short yeah. order. And then, of course, we added the liftoff, the liftoff this year. And then you've got the Invitational in December. Right. And so There's really no break now. It really has grown to – it used to be you could do media on the side. You could mm-hmm. have other responsibilities. And just when these few events popped up, you'd go work these few events. Right. And now – I always wondered when it would be, and now it's we're on the precipice of like, hey, this is, this is what Full you do time, yeah. year-round. And, uh, yeah, no complaints. It's – that's cool. That's cool. So I'm also interested, now that you, you've had that experience working seminars and kind of bringing people into CrossFit for the first time, and now you're a lot of times covering the games athletes or the people at the very highest level. And a lot of people now that the games are on ESPN, that's the way that they're introduced to CrossFit, or that might be the first time that they see it. Mm-hmm. So I'm interested in your perspective, what role you think the games plays in the grand scheme of CrossFit. Ooh. I think it's a pheno- it's phenomenal for several reasons. Mm-hmm. It is the only legitimate, genuine test of fitness to find the top dog, male and female, period, end of story. Like that, no one else is doing that, and and it's, it is what it is. Mm-hmm. And so that's great just to see. That's great just to see, like, holy moly, like I just didn't know a human being was right. capable of that amount of work. Right. That's fascinating. But then I think it's also a great just 
piece of marketing really for if you're an affiliate to drive mm-hmm. interest to people see these amazing things happening and they're like what is this crossfit thing these people seem superhuman or i want to look like that guy or i want to look like that girl or mm-hmm. and now these days with if maybe a couple of years ago it was just you just saw the individual athletes and you're like well that's too scary i couldn't do that well right. now you see the masters mm-hmm. throwing down all the way up to in their 60s and then you see the teens. It's like, well, that's covering the whole spectrum. It's like right. wherever you fall, somebody's in there. You can relate. So I think it's a great a great motor to drive affiliate traffic and mm-hmm. hopefully get members through the door. I think the only thing that has to be managed and the message needs to get out there is it can be scary and intimidating to a lot of regular folks mm-hmm. that are, you know, suffering from chronic disease or – just, you know, grossly out of shape or whatever to say, I'm so far from that. Like, that's right. not for me. That's super intimidating. And those people might be reluctant mm-hmm. to go find an affiliate because of what they see at the games. They don't understand the scalability component. So that's that falls on us at media mm-hmm. to put out content and to find those people and tell their stories. So that, and, you know, and people go, oh, okay, like, that's the top of the top, but I can do the same thing they're doing just for me mm-hmm. and and I'll greatly improve. So... Right. That's kind of what we struggle with. And I think I love, I always love the commercials. Those are my favorite part of watching the games on That's TV. That's I tell think, that message. Right. I think you do a great job. The commercial, I don't know if it was last year or the year before, of the guy who was 100 or 90, 90 something years mm-hmm. old Those doing are the best. CrossFit. I've showed that to so many people because they don't believe it that someone who's 90 could be doing CrossFit. That's, and, and you're probably going to deal with this too in the, in the medical community. There's just, they just have to change that mindset that it is that it actually is for everybody. Right. One of our flow masters, you probably know him, Joe Alexander. Oh yeah. So Joe's incredibly intelligent, and his father is a physician. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, you know, physicians, of course, are very well educated, know it, and so they <laughs> tend to think they know a lot. Right. They know everything. And so Joe's father was aging, and he was losing functional capacity. Okay. So Joe worked for CrossFit. He's like, hey, you know, let's you need to squat dad like you're in trouble mm-hmm. i don't care what your blood work says like you're in trouble right and of course his dad's a physician and it was like not going to do it. it's bad for your knees i know you know every everyone knows that <laughs> and so joe tricked him to a little meta jedi mind trick he's like well you sit down in your chair every day and you stand up and his dad's like yeah it's fine he goes well could i make a workout where we bring out a chair and you do 50 sit to stands yeah and then a little jog and 50 sit to stands and his dad's like well it's not squatting that's fine <laughs> sure why and not? so <laughs> our job is to find tricky ways right to get just for them to try and then after they realize that they're like oh i was squatting wasn't i mm-hmm. i feel pretty good okay and then and their mind instead of going from close it opens up just a little bit right and uh so yeah, that's and we get to tell those stories a lot during those commercials at the games. Yeah. I think it is a lot of times for people that psychological barrier of starting almost whether it's like how you started and you're like, Oh, I don't need this, I've got my own thing I going do on or on the other end where you see the games and you think, I could never do that. I'm you know, I'm never gonna be able to look like them or do what they do. Yep. But to be able to break down that barrier and show what is possible and how scalable it is. That's the challenge. And everyone's at a different point in their life, you know. I mean, I'm not – I have no interest in, in me personally competing anymore. I'm mm-hmm. not looking to the future, and I just want to live as long, as healthy as I can. And I've had some motorcycle wrecks. I've been very bad to my body over the years. So I have to scale the heck out of things, mm-hmm. you know, which is a swallowing of pride. <laughs> but I realized, you know, the value. And it's, it even took me a while – to scale things that I should scale and not just be an idiot and try to push through on a movement or loading that I shouldn't just to say I did it as prescribed. So the learning curve never, it never Never stops, unfortunately. Right. Um, So what would you say if you had to give advice to someone who was starting CrossFit today, what do you think would be your best words of wisdom? I would say if you're starting today, well, if you're starting, that tells me that your foot's already in the door, which so is that's good. Because I was going to say the first thing I would say is if it sounds wildly different than whatever you were doing, mm-hmm. if it goes against whatever your exercise science teacher told you in college or whatever, like put those preconceived notions aside and just walk in unbiased with, an, with open ears, open heart, and mm-hmm. just give it a shot, you know, because the proof's in the pudding. Mm-hmm. You know, if you give something three months – if you look better, sleep better, feel better, mm-hmm. I'd have to say it works. It's working. You know, if, if three months later it doesn't. So cross it's one of those things where it's really tough to just you can explain it. Mm-hmm. You know, we did it for a living for a long time. 
but it has to be experienced. Right. And so the best thing you could do is just get on the affiliate finder map, find your local affiliate, get in there and just dip your toe in the water mm-hmm. and trust them and just, uh, and hold on. Give it a shot. Yeah. Do you think that advice is different from what you would have told someone back in 2006 or 2007? Oh yeah. Wildly. So I always say, you know, yeah, you can use this. I don't care. There, you know, there, <laughs> <laughs> there are, there are things I would do with my friends okay. that I would never do with a paying client. <laughs> you know, my friends, I want to really see them get messed up and laying on the floor, you know, <laughs> vomiting. I would never do that to some <laughs> poor client that walked in, you know, overweight or whatever it is. You're but right. your buddies, they have a wider strike zone. <laughs> so back in 2006, there was in 2005, there was a lot more just deep end of the pool. It's okay. like, you're not sure what CrossFit is? Like, and you just dose them up with right. Fran and watch the wheels come off and you're like, that's CrossFit. <laughs> and and today, that's not really appropriate. <laughs> it still might be incredibly entertaining, right. but not appropriate. Today, um, the best thing is honestly, I would if I had somebody new, I would want to scale and modify something so much so that the next day they came in and told me, hey, you know what? You could have given me a bit more. Mm-hmm. Like I, That would make me happy, okay. not the next day, I'm like, hey, why didn't you show up? And they're like, I could barely walk because right. of what you did. That's what I would have done in 2005. <laughs> that would have been my success. <laughs> right. So now it would have been like, yeah, like it's nice easy and incremental yeah. dosing it up and, mm-hmm. and keep them coming back. Smart. Very smart. <laughs> what advice would you give to someone who wants to start competing in CrossFit? Ooh. Man, wants to start competing. Well, I don't want to give away the secret training because we all know there's a secret, secret program <laughs> that if you follow it, you're going to be amazing. <laughs> that that would probably be exactly what I would tell them. I'm I'm not an exceptional athlete myself, but I'm very lucky in the fact that all I do is talk and immerse myself to incredible athletes and they're wonderful enough to tell me and let me peek into their lives mm-hmm. and see what they're doing. And I'm not going to betray anyone's trust when I say that none of them are doing anything secret. Mm-mm. None of them. That are, as a matter of fact, I won't say any names, but the ones that I think won't do well are the ones that are overcomplicating things mm. and chasing some metrics or markers that are just, they're just not chasing. Is more load going in the bar? Right. Are you, is time domains improving? So I would say you have, it's the CrossFit games. Mm-hmm. It's not the Olympic lifting games. It's not the power lifting games. It's not the whatever games. It's right. the CrossFit games. All those other things are elements of it. There's a lot of points in the table in a one rep max snatch. You Mm -hmm. better be able to do it. You need to be incredibly strong. But if you bias your training too much in any one of those directions, you're going to be what we talk about during that one event and then during no single other event, even if you were lucky enough to get there. Right. So I would say get yourself a good coach, pay attention to what you're eating, get enough sleep. If you're going to compete these days, unfortunately, the days of one workout are gone. Mm-hmm. You know, hopefully you've been hopefully you've been doing CrossFit for multiple years that you have a base and you're not just jumping into it. You're going to have to do multiple workouts a day, and but then I would say what separates separates the good from the great is I think a lot of the great athletes have a really honest critique of themselves mm-hmm. and what they need to do to get better, and they don't run away from eradicating those weaknesses Mm -hmm. you know and they do everything from short to medium to long to body weight they'll do everything from an an empty barbell and jackie to the heaviest snatch they can work in everything in between and and they're doing it all the time and then that's the physical training component rest when you need to rest Mm -hmm. and then i think the mental side of it is throw yourself into some competitions as often as you can because you can't buy that experience. Right. There's so many rookies that show up to the games that are so physically capable and don't live up to their potential at the games because we always say there's something to being a veteran oh, at the games, yeah. and there is. Mm-hmm. You know, So just the more competition and, and nerves that you can feel and overcome that, you're not going to get that into your regular training session in the gym. And then it will also teach you you know, you'll get no rep when you thought it was totally unfair. Right. And you'll have to overcome it. You know, you inclement weather. You're not going to have your gear. And you'll just become what I hope to be as a competitor, very compliant. Like, I think that's one of Froning's biggest deals is he never complains about whatever it is. Mm-hmm. Change the work at the last second. He doesn't care. The answer is always yes. Hey, this is where the work it is. Right. Okay. Sure. Let's do you it. Know? Yeah. And it's not some people like, oh, that's not in my wheelhouse. Right. If, if, 
some people always probably have things they prefer, things that they're better at, mm -hmm. but you want to get away from that wheelhouse by working those weaknesses. So just Becca Voigt, right? Right. I mean, just what does Becca Voigt excel at? <laughs> I don't know, but she's good at everything. Everything, yeah. And we see her year after year, so it's kind of what I would chase. That was fantastic advice. Oh. I think you nailed it. <laughs> Covered it all. Do what I can. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. You talked a little bit before about some of your motorcycle accidents and scaling now and myself having recently recovered from an injury and talking to some other, like I recently talked to Scott Panchik who was recovering from an injury mm -hmm. and about how much you learn from that process and how much you have to kind of swallow your pride and take a step back to move a little bit forward in the long run. Um, so what, what did you learn from that process? Um, and how do you think that that's helping you now um, as you move forward long term? I learned, so the most recent one was, I've done a lot of stupid things <laughs> on motorcycles. Uh, I've been hit by cars. Oh I've pitched my myself over handlebars at 60 miles an hour. I've been ejected 85 feet and the paramedics found me. I don't want to hear about like this all stuff. Kinds of stuff. But uh, <laughs> the last one was last year I was in the woods and separated my AC joint, like mm -hmm. level five, like bad and got I've got a lot of concussions too from motorcycle wrecks mm -hmm. probably the worst concussion I've ever had but that that tearing of the AC joint man it it just I've been extremely lucky in my previous accidents where mm -hmm. I've been banged up but I could still somehow through the grace of God never broke any bones never okay. did anything I don't know how this one was the first time that like I ripped my arm off and couldn't use this. And so my mobility, my functionality was greatly reduced. Mm -hmm. And I had such an appreciation for all those little things. Right. Like just, I couldn't put on my socks, right. you know, anything which occurred in a bathroom was horrible. Right. <laughs> you know, all those things <laughs> you take shower, for granted. Yeah. I was like, I don't care what my snatch number is. I don't care. Like, I just want to live, be able to live my right. life right. pain free and with a full range of motion in my joints and for uh, the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. And so I had to scale a whole bunch of stuff, do a bunch of one arm stuff, you know, to get back. Mm -hmm. And then even once I got back, I think I've just done so many bad things to this arm for so many years that like, I don't really go overhead anymore. Mm -hmm. I was known for having a terrible overhead position for <laughs> years and years. And I think this was the straw that broke the camel's back that no amount of rolling or bands. It's just, it's just like, we're done. Right. And so I do like dumbbell thrusters to go overhead because okay. I can, if this arm has to like go out in a weird position that's pain free, I'll let it. But with like a barbell forces it and that's no good. Okay. So I've just tried to get in a pushing motion and I like, I'll do a bunch of push ups now. I do mm -hmm. bench press, I do ring dips, you know. So I try to get in pressing I can mm -hmm. in anything other than the overhead mm -hmm. and haven't lost since I wasn't great anyway overhead. I haven't lost that much and now I'm just a lot more willing and ready to look at a workout and go, ah, I'm going to change it this way, mm -hmm. you know? And, and I must admit, since I've been doing that, I always had a bad neck too, a quote unquote bad neck, okay. even before the AC joint okay. deal. And now since I stopped going overhead, which was a position, like I said, that it has been bad for years and years, my neck has never felt so good. Mm. Even though I got the concussion, the AC joint, it's right. felt better than it has in years which is obviously directly related to me finally making some good decisions, swallowing my pride mm -hmm. and realizing that even if I do have to eliminate a couple of these movements from my repertoire, you know, we're mm -hmm. still doing 210 other movements right. in CrossFit. <laughs> and I haven't noticed any degradation whatsoever in my quality of life. My quality of life mm -hmm. has only improved because my neck doesn't right. feel. Now, if I wanted to compete in masters, there's no way that I could because I'm even worse overhead than before. But since I'm not looking to compete again, that's another, just like me reassessing where I currently right. am in my life. And, uh, doing that has, has been a very good choice. I think that's a good measure to look at. Okay. Where's my quality of life instead of a lot of people maybe get caught up in the competition aspect. And can I do every workout RX when it, maybe it's better to just step back and say, okay, what's going to get me the overall best quality of life for the next 30 years. You competition know? training is, People are insane with it. <laughs> Every it's, It appears, mm -hmm. not, not that you can go by social media and everything, that I think I might be the only person in the world doing one workout a day and going home. <laughs> like maybe you are now that you're not competing anymore. anymore but like mm. everyone seems like 
they are doing like a workout that would I would consider a crushing workout, right. like a full like the sevens or something <laughs> terrible, right? They'd be mm-hmm. like, Oh, that looks like a good little burner. Let's do that in the second sesh today. And I'm like, <laughs> What? <laughs> right. Who are these people? Right. Ne- you've never been to regional, so I think you're doing something wrong. <laughs> or maybe you just maybe just love working out. And if you love working out and that's right. what brings that's you cool. joy, then hey, rock on. But mm-hmm. it, it seems like there's a lot of people training for competition that uh, I, I just don't know. It seems to be like is the that, new thing. Right. Like one is workout a day is old news. Right. Right. I have to say, I love going back to one workout a day. It's, it's fantastic. One Welcome to the club. I feel much better. My body feels better. Um, I definitely enjoy it a lot more. <laughs> I'd be curious to see with someone like you, cause you know, we obviously have very detailed data mm-hmm. on what you've been capable of doing for mm-hmm. the last several years from metabolic conditioning to snatches to whatever with a, with a high volume of training mm-hmm. to now you going to one workout a day, getting 15 other things on your plate, you know, maybe not hitting with the intensity that you want every now and then cause your sleep's messed up, whatever. Mm-hmm. And seeing how much do you retain right on doing a reduced volume? It'd be mm-hmm. really fascinating to check back in with you in like a year or two mm-hmm. and have you, you know, test do some like, workouts again and see. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you obviously wouldn't be at your regionals or games right. level, but you'd still, I bet complete the workout. It might just be instead of a miserable 18 minute chipper, it was 1945. Right. It's like, you're mm-hmm. not going to bump okay. into anything yeah. in life that you're not going <laughs> to be able to do. Still. Okay. That's the plan. Yeah, exactly. All right. One more thing I want to talk to you about. You're somewhat well known on social media for posting pictures of cheat meals oh, yeah. or things um, that wouldn't necessarily be, <laughs> you know, the best nutrition Embraced. advice. Yes. And I know, I know you talk about um, sometimes just like enjoying yourself, not getting too wrapped up about some of these details. So why, why do you post stuff like that? And why do you think it's important? Or what kind of message are you trying to send to people? I post, I post the delicious, tasty, high sugary <laughs> food because I think it's a lot more interesting than broccoli or kale. True. Um, Very true. But also, I think God bless CrossFitters. God bless them. You know, they, they're, you know, they have a good addiction. Their addiction is a healthy life. Mm-hmm. But I think it can be... You can even overdo that to the point where, like, there's just nice things. It's what a wonderful world we live in that you can go and get delicious ice cream or incredible mm-hmm. slice of carrot cake or some whatever it, whatever it happens to be. Right. You know, it's a work hard, play hard kind of a deal. And I think what what some people, and I fell into this trap because I have an addictive personality. So when I first got into CrossFit, like, I was all in. Mm-hmm. There was no gray area. Yeah. When I did the zone, it was, you know... Every, everything to the T's. And then I finally, but that's not balance. Mm-hmm. And it took me a lot of trial and error to find balance in my personal life because I, I do enjoy food. And what I learned was if I, we always used to say that 80-20 deal. Right. And it really actually is true that if 80% of the time I'm eating, you know, lean chicken breast mm-hmm. and fruits or vegetables and I'm having avocados for my fat or whatnot, that I do actually have a little strike zone. Mm-hmm that I can go out and have that big, tasty, greasy cheeseburger and fries on the weekend, and it it's not even a blip on the radar. Now, if I have it every day, right. that, that's when it becomes a problem. Yeah. But, um, and, I, and I've just played with that little ratio till I found out that, you know, having no cheat meals a week was a miserable way to mm-hmm. live, and I didn't care how healthy I was. Mm-hmm. I wasn't happy. I think there's something to, to be said, too, yeah, for the stress. Like, the fa- if you're so obsessed with it and it causes you right. extra stress because you every time someone – you know, gives you a cookie and it's right. sitting on the table, you're going to be stressed out. That's not healthy either. Missing one workout isn't going to make you like if a year from now you look back, you missed one workout. It's, mm-hmm. it, it's irrelevant, you know? Uh, so it's like what it's the consistency that right. matters. So if most of the time I found you're making good decisions, you're good. And then mm-hmm. if every now and then, you know, it was unexpected. Your buddy's like, hey, we're grabbing pizza tonight. And you're like, oh, I'd love to, but, you know, I'm a nutrition weirdo. Right. Like, that's not <laughs> cool. Right? It's your buddy. Right. Like, go have, you know, you don't right. have to have two pizzas, mm-hmm. but have a slice. You know, right. have a beer and a slice and you're okay. And I think just finding that balance in my life. And, and, and I just want to hopefully be that voice to other people out there that's like, oh, like, oh, this guy actually works for HQ and mm-hmm. he eats normal food every now and then like you don't have to be all or nothing right so hopefully it's just a little sanity check is my uh 
that's my goal. I like it. I like it. All right. I want to finish with three questions. I ask everyone. So the first one is if you could tell us the three things you do on a regular basis that have the biggest overall positive impact on your health. On my health? Yes. So three things you have to do them in real life. Okay. Is an answer like CrossFit or is sure. that? Okay. Yeah. Definitely working out and, and that is not just for the actual physical mm-hmm. gains, but I think for me personally, anyone who knows me, even if I get in a crappy workout, like I have to get one in. Right. On you know, I rest two days a week, but on those other days, if I miss a workout, I'm just grumpy and unhappy. Mm-hmm. So for as much as my physical sanity, my mental sanity, right. I need that. Um, second one is honestly for me to be, we're talking health in general. Mm -hmm. I need to do non CrossFit things. Mm -hmm. That's one of my biggest things. One of my passions is languages. I love Spanish language. And so I study Spanish every day. We got a couple native Spanish speakers in the, uh, in the office here and we'll chat in Spanish every day and they'll be wonderful and help me, you know, uh, correct myself and get better. And I just love that development of something which has nothing to do with CrossFit. Mm-hmm. And then the third one is I need to laugh. <laughs> I have to. It, it, it's, I have a dry, sarcastic sense of humor. And I just, <laughs> whether it's watching Seinfeld when it reruns late at night or talking to a couple of my buddies where we are always, when we're not working here or between working, we're, we're cutting up and joking sure. as much as we can. If I didn't work for CrossFit, I would somehow want to find myself in an occupation like a community. Laughing would be, right. have to be a huge part of my life. So I would say CrossFit, the Spanish, and then laughter laughing. and those three things. If I got those three things, I'm having a pretty good day. I love it. I love it. All right. What about one thing that you think would have a big impact on your health, but you just have trouble implementing it or it hasn't Ooh. worked its way in yet? Man, I could give you a laundry list of things <laughs> I'm not doing. <laughs> uh, if I'm brutally honest with myself, I eat a pathetic amount of vegetables. <laughs> okay, that's I'm, a good I one. Fully embrace that's fruit. That's a good one, yeah. Fully embrace fruit. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'll eat like sweet potatoes and things like that. I eat a lot of sweet potatoes mm-hmm. actually and fruit. But uh, the actual vegetables, man, they're incredibly lacking in my diet mm, and, yeah. and that's something I should probably bring back in but it's just the preparation right it's a I, lot more work it's true it's the work Julie what about like do, sh- do you work. like smoothies or shakes or yeah juice and and I got fired up about that for like a minute or two yeah. and I got some like Amazon gift card for Christmas and bought like some fancy blender right and for like three weeks man I was hot and heavy in it <laughs> shake a night and then I was like yeah, <laughs> just kind of lost interest <laughs> yeah, in it. Yeah, but the sweet potatoes so look good too. Maybe a motivate. Maybe okay. I'll have to bring it back. Okay, that's good. All right, last question. What does a healthy life look like to you? A healthy life to me is... A healthy life to me is... And this becomes more and more apparent as I get older. You know, I'm going to turn mm-hmm. 41 this year. And... uh and my, I'm watching my parents age and all this stuff. And again, things that we used to lecture about, I'm now seeing right. with my own eyes, people go in nursing homes and things like that. It's all your health markers that you would go to a hospital and get checked out, mm-hmm. you know, um, blood pressure, resting heart rate, you know, whatever you want to check, you look good. You mm-hmm. know, the doctor says, Hey, whatever you're doing, keep doing it. The right. charts are great. And then as we all know, you can have that, but not have functional capacity. Mm-hmm. But then I want to be able to actually go outside do work, you know, run around with my nephews for three hours. If I want to Mm -hmm. go hiking, you know, have that ability to do that for years to come. Those two things would be absolutely critical. But then if you're doing all of that devoid of like the love of your friends and family and people Mm -hmm. that you actually enjoy spending your time on this earth with, who cares what your functional capacity is because you're not expressing it with those that bring you joy. Right. So I would say that that's a, a huge component of life is that that circle that you run with. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I would say that's what it looks like to me. I love it. Fantastic. Do what I can. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for having me. Great to hear all of your perspectives and um, we'll have to do it again sometime. Thank you very much. Best of luck in school. Thank you. Thank you all so much for tuning into this episode. I hope you enjoyed hearing from Pat as much as I do. I know he's always going to contribute some interesting information and perspective whenever I talk to him. 
to make sure you never miss an episode in the future and to receive exclusive content from me, make sure you head to my website, juliefouché.com, and subscribe to my email list. Also, don't forget to share your stories. If you or someone you know has used lifestyle to overcome a serious health challenge, please send me an email at info at juliefouché.com. I'll choose some of these stories to share here on the podcast in the future. Also, if you like what you hear, don't forget to subscribe and give us a rating over on iTunes and continue with your feedback. Please leave comments under this post on my website, juliefouché.com, and share your thoughts on social media using hashtag JFHealth. Thank you again so much for listening, and I'll catch you next time on Pursuing Health.